Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Factorio Break the Game, my name is Renegative and let's get cracking with another episode. As you can see here, I have a bit of an upgraded smelting facility. Happy days. Now, I didn't, uh, I decided not to record the construction of this because it was a lot of um, me just screwing around trying to figure out how it all fits together. But this is nearly, nearly going to give me a, a blue belt worth of resources per tick. The the thing about it is though that we are eight furnaces short and you can see by the squeeze that's on it's not gonna quite work out so uh, what I need to do is plumb this in and then we need to start looking at what uh, what we can do to increase the raw input because we have cop issues I just went up and visited one of the outposts and it is completely dry. So we need to get that sorted as quickly as possible. Now I've just run out of resources there, so we will deconstruct all the things here. And then we'll feed it in coming this way. Actually that, um, I used iron to test it because I had plenty of um, iron and we didn't quite get there. Uh, with regards to the numbers that we needed. However, we're very close. So, moving forward, I'm pretty happy with where that uh, where that design leads me. So I need to get this... Sorry, this into here. That's all I need to do. So let's do that now. It's going to be a little bit twisty-turvy-curvy. Oh, that's okay these new belt mechanics I intend to abuse. There we go. Now this uh, unloading design I probably need to revise as well. And now is probably a good time to do that. Oh wow, I have a lot of ore just sitting in my inventory. We'll get rid of some of that. Get rid of some of them. Man, with uh, with pocket bots, your stuff tends to fill up very quickly. You end up with so much stuff just sitting around in your pockets. As they run, they pick it up and they put it in your inventory. Oh, it's horrible, horrible, I tell you. So let's go get that unloading station, make a blueprint of it, and then stamp it down there. And when I say unloading station, I mean Oh, that's not even the right thing, because I've split that out. But you can see what um, what happens with this. Uh, this is our buffer storage that we made in the last episode, I reckon. So you can see that it's uh, it's kind of sorted itself out. Uh, the station is pretty much completely empty, and the the bots just come and clear it at their leisure, throw it in the thing, and uh, Bob's your uncle, Freddy's your aunt. We have a line. I'll just see if I can... No, that's not needed. Yep. I'm happy with that. Now obviously it's not balanced, uh, but I figure this can balance itself inside its setup. Now, where was it? Well, I'm just going to have to build it again, I'm afraid. So let's run down here and just get it built. Actually, this might be a good time for us to introduce a little bit of buffer storage on the copper side. I can't do a full one yet. That's going to have to wait until we have a little bit more space. I'm thinking that the copper unload station will need to move. And I was having a look on the map, and maybe we can do unloading over here. Take use of all this space here, so do like two iron unloads, two copper unloads, and then run them into the top of the furnace over here. Something like that, anyway. That, that were those were the vague thoughts, and I'd like to get uh, Colonel Will's thoughts on it before I uh, go and jump into it. Now, if we demolish everything from there down.
Okay. Let me get rid of that. Okay, now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's that's right. That's okay. Now for each go away. Now here is where we start build. Luckily that won't unload for the moment because I got it all unplugged. So thank heavens for small favours. Now then, let's see if we can get this worked out. So we go one, two, three, four, and on the fifth go up. Means that's an up, that's a sideways, that's a sideways, that's an up, that's an up, that's a sideways. And then this, this thing goes up in there. And we have two splitters and a splitter there. Now I did mention buffer storage, didn't I? Uh, apparently I forgot. Ah <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> let me let me just blueprint that. So if we move it to there, that works too. So we just pick that up. Boom. Boom. Now where did that go? Here it is. Radio. Now this is still a half unload station. Uh, if this was going to be a full, I would then mirror these onto the other side and be unloading on both sides of the track. Uh, however, space. Just don't have enough of it. Pretty horrible like that. So we will come this way. I just can't get used to putting curves in belts. That's something that I've been been avoiding for so long, like over a year. I've been saying that curves are the devil, and here I am just bending things around and yeah, just generally ignoring my own advice. It is kind of getting to me. So that isn't quite giving full compression. I wonder why. In the meantime though, it definitely needs some lights. Let's have a run down here and see what's happening. Yep. Now, obviously, there's no attached buffer storage right now for uh, copper. So that's something I will have to change eventually. However, this means that our copper smelting, the original copper smelting, is now defunct. It's, uh, it can be disconnected. Uh, but I'm not sure I'm going to quite yet. I'm just going to leave it there for a moment. Now, I reckon I need to fit some lights into this thing. Because illumination is important. Always. Now, I've combined underground belts and I've tried to keep the footprint relatively small and I think that I've come up with a pretty good design here I've borrowed some inspiration from Damon Engineer he runs his uh, where am I being attacked over to the right we seem to be okay he runs his beacons down the edge now the beacons what we can do with the beacons we can throw for example productivity modules in them 
Oh, come on. We can we can throw stuff in there, basically. We can use it. You can see that the output here isn't quite a full belt. I think it's about three quarters. But that's uh, that's a good starting place for us. Now I also I've also been thinking about shifting this all the way over here so that then I can run the outflow lines. However, we start to run into quite a considerable space issue. So this this I'm quickly outgrowing this factory. Let's just put it like that. So uh, let's pick up some of this. Now the iron is going okay. I'm trying to, you know, remove my reliance upon coal if I can. You notice that 112 furnaces are only taking up well, less than a kilowatt. That's what happens when you put uh, a whole bunch of module twos in them. So they're each using 36, and there's 112 of them. So a little bit of maths: 112 times 36 is only 4,000 kilowatts. So four megawatts for quite a substantial uh, furnace setup. Now this consumes, however, 180. So you compare that to the coal cost. Where is the coal? Oh come on, it's got to be here somewhere. Coal cost of 8 megajoules. It, you come out in front doing it this way. At least I believe so anyway, because you can use solar power to generate that, rather than having to rely upon... Look at this. There's... This is missing an inserter. So it has never, ever, ever exported anything to the line. Are there any others? Mmm, there you go. So it was the only one. <laughs> Right, so how, how good is that? We just uh, we spotted that. Now I'll break that there. Because what I want to do is get all the coal off the line. Just basically drain this factory. Or drain the furnace. Drain the fuel lines is what I want to do. Okay, so we've drained the fuel lines now. All we'd have to do is deconstruct all of the furnaces and uh, yeah it would be good for an upgrade now what I also want to do this episode is head out to the new copper mine and turn it on so I am going to first ditch some stuff because I have too much on board everything else I think I can get away with Yep, happy with that. Alrighty, let's uh, let's roll. So the new copper is over here at Copper South East, or South East Copper, should I say? Yeah, I'm gonna have to change that. Change it so it's Copper South East. That way I can search for C for copper, I for iron, S for stone, so on and so forth. Once we have this output set up, we can then um, output outpost set up. We can then task some trains to come out and pick up some of the goodies that we have waiting for it. You know, here here would actually be the other spot that we could potentially run some unloading yards. So here, here, and here, for example, because uh, then we've got plenty of space running back this way to uh, to run stackers and all of that kind of goodness. Maybe that's what I'll do. Is this makes a little bit more sense? Then I can run the lines down and into the down and into the uh, into the furnace setup. I can remove the copper unload. This potentially the entire rail yard may need to be moved. However, such as such as the brakes, because uh, we need to expand the size considerably if we're going to break the game. Version twelve is being most resilient when it comes to our um, when it comes to breaking the game now I just want to check very quickly make sure that we have the correct loading which we do not so I'm going to pull this down okay 
right up to there we have it correct one two three four five six Hmm. Because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So, that's interesting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Madzuri's design that I'm looking at here has a 7 lane loader. I obviously only run with the 6. Well, that's slightly incompatible. Control Z? Does that is that a thing? Can I put back all those? <laughs> oh no. Anyway, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I've got six outputs that I then need to take into say four. So how are we gonna do that? Well, I could use a an eight lane rebalancer, maybe. That might work. Use an eight lane and then compress the eight into six. So it begs the question, what does an eight lane rebalancer look like? Let's see if we can find one. Zuri's uh, got an album that, uh... oh, there we go, and we have it. So let's start out with our inputs. So we have, oh, hold on, let me just build it the same as what I'm looking at it, because then that is easiest for my brain. Now these designs are the product of a lot of hard work, generally. Now I need a to there. So that goes over one and two. Because there is a belt that runs here, like that, and there is another belt, runs here like that, now this will balance 8 inputs, so I'm figuring if I put 6 into it, it should work, if I recirculate 2, 2 round to the start, that's the theory behind it. So this needs a thing in there. There we go, that's that. One, two. Now the advantage of this is once you once you build it once, you never have to build it again. You just blueprint it and use it. There we go. So, as I was saying, if I grab two outputs and recirculate them, oops, go this way. There we go, that should be an eight lane rebalancer. Bada bing, bada boom. So I'll pick that up, and we'll see if it works. Now where'd I put it? There it is. Okay, that's the in, that's the out. How about that, looks good. Okay. 
Oops. I need a little bit more belt. Or well, we'll do shortly anyway. I'd like to get this hooked up and turned on this episode. So we'll continue on with the episode even though we're running a little bit over time. Oops. We can get it there, go there. Oh, that lines up perfectly. Oops. You in there, you in there. Ah, wonderful. input. Seriously? Nah, I'm that short. Alright, let's get it going. There we go, that's that. So now I've got uh, three out of each side. Hmm, I've got four. Bugger. Um... Hmm. What I might actually do is just pick up... Well, I'm figuring... Here's what I think, right? That should work close enough for my purposes. We'll try that again, just with a little bit more finesse on the copying side. There we go. We'll pick up this side entirely. I don't think we're going to need it. I think just having the, the loading on one side will do for this little outpost here. And then as I get a proper station sorted, I'll just uh, blueprint that down in future. But for this one, just right now, I just want to get it rolling. So... We need to go... There's not quite enough room. Alright. We need to amend this a little bit. See if we can get it to work a little bit nicer. I'll skip that input. Theory is that if I'm drawing from both these two splitters, I should get approximately an even spread. Now then, let me delete this and run the train into the siding. because now I can turn it on. I'll throw that down there. It's almost like Christmas. You can see the green line jump. <laughs> There is a bit of a bias to the inside too. And that's because of the recirculators, I think. Alright. So we need to change the filter over. 
But that is that done. So, thank you for joining me, ladies and gentlemen. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode, where we continue to try and break the game. <laughs>